I want to talk this evening about the possibility of American democracy. And it brings to mind the, the joke that was attributed to Gandhi, where a reporter uh, said to him, you know, Mr. Gandhi, uh, what do you think of Western civilization? And he replied, I think that it would be a good idea. And what we mean by this in terms of the possibility of American democracy, we have a conversation, a kind of passive conversation about democracy in the United States in, in which we uh, offhandedly refer to ourselves as a democratic society. But one of the things that I take pains to ensure or to uh, repeat to my students is that American democracy is considerably younger than the American constitution. If we look at just kind of casual glance at the history of the United States, could we truly say that those 13 colonies that began strung along the Eastern seaboard uh, and emerged into the first 13 states formed a democracy in which it was possible to buy and sell human beings? Is it possible to be a democracy and conduct such practices? So maybe we could say that American democracy begins in 1865 with the 13th Amendment that abolished the institution of slavery except in cases where people shall have been duly convicted of a crime. Those of you who've seen the film 13th know what that asterisk uh, has come to mean. Or we could say that American democracy begins in 1868 with the ratification of the 14th Amendment, which says explicitly that all people born in this country are citizens of this country and that they are all entitled to equal protection under the law. Or we could say that American democracy begins two years after that in 1870 with the passage of the 15th amendment which explicitly said that it was uh, illegal, unconstitutional to prohibit the right to vote on the basis of race. Or we could jump 50 years after that and say that American democracy begins in 1920 with the ratification of the 19th amendment and reasonably, you could make a reasonable argument that American democracy uh, is the inception of American democracy is 1965 with the passage of the Voting Rights Act, which created legal protections and a mechanism to ensure the right to vote to people irrespective of the color of their skin. The basic point though, is that what we think of as democracy is young and fragile and hardly as formidable and impregnable as we commonly presume it to be. If we have any questions about this, the past five years should have given us an indicator of the nature of American democracy, specifically the events that culminated on January 6th. We saw many of us watching in horror as an angry mob carrying the symbols of the Confederacy and which represented an attempt to overthrow the government of the United States between 1861 and 1865. A mob carrying those symbols as well as symbols associated with Nazism and vile racist and anti-Semitic ideas and slogans overran the United States Capitol, threatening to kill duly elected representatives of the United States to the United States Senate, the United States House of Representatives, threatening to hang the Vice President of the United States, all done with the encouragement of the sitting President of the United States. It's been pointed out that in the four years of the Civil War, the Confederate flag never breached the halls of the United States Capitol, but it did last month. And this should be something that troubles all of us. Just a week ago, the Department of Homeland Security issued a warning 
saying that uh, a threat assessment warning, saying that uh, domestic terrorists, white nationalist terrorists, posed a significant threat to the United States. And so this is where we find ourselves in a season of tumult and turmoil. One of the things that I believe as a historian is that we cannot move forward until we have thoroughly and responsibly and maturely grappled with what happened in the past. And the fact of it is that fundamentally, the United States has consistently seen the parameters of democracy curtailed by the commitment to white supremacy.